Good morning. We've got folks coming on in. And Elena, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Um, okay, that was that was mic check. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Should I share the slides or will nope, you? I've got it. I, okay. I have all of it. All as well. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes because I don't have anyone that came by my desk and said regrets this morning, so we'll see. Hiya. Hello. Liz, I will pass to you about when we start. Just kind of waiting on a few more folks to be able to come on in. All right. Yeah. Just having a look to see who's only a couple of minutes past, isn't it? Give them, give them another minute. It is also that delightful week of what is time, anyways. I so nearly got this wrong this week. That was, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's that wonderful week. It's my favorite week. All right. Looks like we have stabilized on 28 people at the moment so hello everyone welcome let's get started uh normal introductions apply hello you made it welcome uh okay and we have the tech radar this will be very exciting i can't remember who do we have to present the tech radar do we have uh, we have elena on deck elena hello. hello hello to you elena thank you all right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alina. I'm a software engineer at Apple and one of the CNCF TOCs. And today I'm going to be presenting the CNCF and user technical radar uh, on secrets management that got published last week. Secret management involves tools and techniques to manage secret data like token, passwords, um, and certificates. And it becomes more essential and complicated <clears throat> as a cloud native ecosystem grows. Uh, because the microservices need to talk to each other and they need to talk to each other in, uh, in, a, uh, in a secure manner. Uh, next, please. Now, what is a technology radar? Technology radar is an initiative from the CNCF and user community. Um, and uh, that's a group uh, with over 140 companies that meet regularly and discuss challenges that are involved with the cloud native tools adoption. Um, and uh, the goal of CNCF Technology Radar is to share uh, the tools that actively are being used by the community and tools that end user companies recommend to use. It is a community driven. The data is contributed by CNCF and user companies and curated by the community representatives. And uh, the, adoption, uh, the initiative focuses on the future adoption. That's why we went with three rings, adopt, trial and assess. Adopt is um, when um, the technology is clearly recommended by the end user community. Trial is that companies use it with success and recommend looking at it. And assess is companies try it out and find it promising and recommend you keeping an eye on it. Next, please. 79 companies participated in, um, in the secrets management technology radar uh, and the results were somewhat interesting uh, and surprising. Um, the variety of tools that are used for secrets management by different companies was wide, yet we were able to identify some exciting things uh, of how people use uh, secret management tools. Uh, next, please. 
much of the uh, radar team uh, was initially surprised. Oh, please, next. Oh, just so we, we can see the first theme. That Walt was the clear winner uh, as it got the broadest adoption across many companies. Um, Walt is a very mature solution by the Harshi Corp, yet it's not um, the easiest one to use. And uh, it is a rather complex, complex tool with a high operational burden, but the adoption was high. And the more we looked at it, the more we realized that uh, it makes sense. If you're a small company, uh, you would most likely offload your secrets management to the company who knows how to do that. Um, and also it is a very, uh, it is a very good uh, tool because it's a cloud agnostic tool. And if you're unsure of what cloud you're gonna operate on, or if you're operating across multiple clouds, public and private, Vault is a great solution for that. That was our first theme. Uh, next, please. And the second theme was that uh, we've noticed that the companies tend to choose um, the solution, secret management solution uh, that is native to the cloud where they run their workloads. Um, and, it's, and it's very natural because you tend to look um, at the solutions that are available out there. And the tools that got listed in the technology radar uh, were uh, AWS uh, secrets management, GCP secrets management, Azure Key Vault. Um, and uh, although it's a very natural move to use a secrets management solution from the cloud where you're operating, uh, we recommend you taking like a broader, a broader look uh, and, um, and consider using the cloud agnostic tool because uh, especially if you're considering um, extending your footprint uh, across multiple, multiple clouds. Uh, next, please. Uh, the third, a very interesting thing that we found that the certificate manager got a very uh, high adoption in a very short time uh, in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, certificate manager is a Kubernetes native tool that is used for uh, managing the certificates, um, uh, rotate them on the regular basis and ensure that uh, they are up to date. It offers a high integration with the rest of the Kubernetes ecosystem. And uh, we believe that secret management is a, in top of mind of everybody who uses Kubernetes. Um, that's why uh, secret management is such a widespread solution. Uh, next, please. And other solutions besides Vault, uh, public cloud solutions and certificates manager were very fragmented. Uh, in the technology radar, we usually offer the list of the tools to go by, uh, but then as a user, uh, before voting, you can put your own solution that you use in-house. And something we didn't think initially that, uh, for example, uh, people were using encrypted data backs with DevOps tools like Chef and Puppet, uh, Ansible. And um, these solutions were one of solutions offered by people uh, and put on the list by people, but they did not get uh, a wide adoption across companies. That's why you don't see it on the radar. And um, uh, one result that we were surprised is uh, some, some solutions like Spire, for example, that is uh, an incubated CNCF project, uh, didn't get, um, uh, didn't get a, a enough adoption yet to be, uh, to be put in the, um, on the radar. And I think we, the, we know the reason why it's a rather complex tool uh, that uh, covers many, uh, many areas and people are experimenting with that and it might take time for them to, um, to get a full adoption um, and uh, put it in one of the uh, in one of the technology radar categories. Uh, so these are the four themes that we've noticed in the secrets management um, a radar process. And uh, we are curious to hear your feedback and hear about the secret management solutions that you use in-house. Uh, that's it. Thank you. One question in chat. Actually, there's quite a few mm -hmm. questions in chat. Take it back. Um, so where do you want to start? Because the first one is, how does this particular tech radar response compare to other subjects done previously? Um, and then there's a question from Liz as well. So Jim, Liz, do you want to be able to like raise your questions by voice? Yeah, I, uh, Jim St. Ledger, just looking for some comparison. I don't know if I, I think Cheryl chimed in, you know, 29 companies, 79 votes. You know, is that a good, is that a better or worse response than past tech radars we've done? It's a similar number of companies who've responded. Um, the number of votes in this case was lower for the ones that actually went into the final radar because there was a very long tail of projects and products that only had a handful of votes each. Okay. And it was thought that with only a few votes, it wasn't fair to right. make a judgment on them. Right, right, okay, thank you. Welcome. 
Liz, I'll pass to you next. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Elena mentioned Spire not making it onto this assessment, and I just wondered whether, because it's not really some general purpose secrets, as I understand it. I think it's more around like identity. That's right. That's one. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. So not because necessarily comparing apples with apples. That's that's right. It was yeah. mentioned. It was mentioned on the list, though. It just didn't make it to the reader. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we need to. I guess what I'm saying is I don't think we need to read anything negative in about Spire there because it's no, no, they no, wouldn't no. have been central to this. Assessment. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Were there any other tools missing that we might have expected to see there? Good question. I guess it's a good question to, to audience as well. Are there any tools that you think should have been there and you don't see? Yes, Conjure does come to mind. Cheryl, do you remember if you had it on the list? Yeah, Conjure was on the list. Aspire was as well, as you said. Yeah. Secretless, I don't think so. Um, it came down to the companies that were contributing to it. So if they, they could add extra suggestions to the list of products and projects, uh, I guess in this case they didn't. Keywords was on there as well. Yeah, sort manager, sort manager is here. It is what certificate manager is on the uh, on the radar. It's it's really not a a secret store or a secrets management solution per se. It's more a certificate distribution mechanism, right? Uh, that's right. Yet it ensures that your certificates are um, secure in a way that they're rotated on a regular basis and maintained uh, in a uh, in a reliable and uh, and secure way. Yeah, there there's seems to be the the contention between what we call a secret, traditionally like certificates or more identities than than secret material, and perhaps the scope should be brought into authentication technologies, which encompasses both, touches both on the proof of possession as well as identities and, and recognition technologies as like Spire and Cert Manager would be. Good point, yeah. So, uh, hi, um, I'm from HashiCorp. Um, so it's good to see Vault up here. The way we think about this often is, um, in order to worry about identity, um, there's a sort of a dividing line between human and machine and human to machine authentication and identity uh, is very different from machine to machine identity, um, recognition and differentiation. And so um, sometimes we wind up in a situation where people are talking about their identity or secrets management, and you have to kind of like chop down to the next level about what they mean by that. Um, so authentication and authorization for, um, you know, um, individuals uh, to access machine uh, services or um, uh, capabilities, service endpoints um, is traditionally handled very well by lots of like single sign-on providers. Okta and uh, Microsoft solutions, but the machine to machine market is where the secrets management winds up becoming the most uh, sort of like natural thing to do. And people have gone by with certificate rotation, but once they actually realize they got to do some real secrets management, that's where Vault winds up becoming super popular. And so um, we noticed that a lot. Oh, this chart um, on the radar looks very much like what we see when we're talking to customers. The only obvious one that is missing is CyberArk, uh, which is the, usually the solution, incumbent solution if someone's got something like this that we're displacing when we're talking to them, so. 
Yes, that's true. That's a fair point. Bought support for both secrets and PKI. Maybe maybe the root cause for this. What what were people thinking of when or or what's included under the encrypted repositories item? I guess one question I have when I see that is, well, where is the secret store that decrypts whatever's being held in the repository? Hmm. My impression was that the secret was actually in the repository and that was the bit that was encrypted, but I don't know in enough detail to confirm. Yeah, because I, I, yes, as well. Because I guess you can, you can have um, encrypted, you have encrypted images, I guess you can have encryption in the repository itself, whether we're talking about images or, or some other entity, but you, you, you need to get hold of a secret somehow to unlock that. That's quite intriguing. Yeah, I think that uh, that's master key, right? I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think in Vault is, um, I don't know if if it has changed over the years, but uh, I looked at it like a few years ago and then it and they were in keeping that in memory. Uh, so essentially you uh, you had a, a cluster, so they recommended redundancy, redundancy where you had like several, several nodes, like, you know, maybe three nodes. And that key was actually stored uh, in, all of the nodes. So if one of the nodes actually went down, then you still had the master key lying somewhere. But then the question came up, but what if all the nodes went down? Where would that master key be, right? So, but I, I don't know if they've actually changed some of that uh, implementation over the years, they might have. Um, uh, they also have some uh, capabilities for HSM, which is a hardware encryption, uh, Appliance, I guess that you can you can st store maybe master keys and some credentials. I think um, Hashiko or, or Vault has some really nice technologies around secrets that can only be used a limited number of times or for a limited time frame, which is really good for that sort of bootstrap problem. That, um, you know, if you've got a one-time use key you're either the legitimate user of it when you use it or you're not, but then you know when you try to use it that somebody illegitimate already used it. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear a couple of things from, from what Liz and Ricardo just said. Uh, to Liz's initial point, there, there are a number of databases or repositories that can be encrypted that will act as your secret storage. In addition to that, what Ricardo said is if you're placing any, any secret in there, you're going to need a decryp decryption key to take it out. And in order to secure that decryption key or like storing that decryption key somewhere, you need yet another secret and it's turtles all the way down. And that's often what's referred to as secret zero. And then there's an overlap there with identity systems as well, as you can break that turtles all the way down by say using cert manager or using spire to use that identity of the decryption key and don't have to worry well you, at runtime you can attest the provenance of this or the shape and size of this or the code fingerprint and based of that you no longer need decryption keys because you can use that as the master key So with, with everything that is, that is discussed, it would be really good to extend the report or like do a write up in addition to it, because there's plenty of nuance that's not getting covered. And I'm afraid that people who are seeing this for, for the first time would walk away with the wrong ideas or, or the wrong perception and like actually not know of, of a bunch of other ecosystem components that can be elevated or can be discovered and, and put in use to, to have better security in place. Yeah, I wonder whether it makes sense to have, you know, 
SIG Security is an obvious contact point here, but to, to maybe add a bit of color around this. Cheryl, is this all, this is already published, published, right? It is published. I mean, we can do whatever we want, right? We can um, make changes to it. I So the, the radar team that created this, I don't want to speak on their behalf. I don't want to change things, the judgments that they made with this. I think if SIG Security wanted to publish, take this as a starting point and then publish a more nuanced discussion or suggestions on it, that would be fantastic. Mm. I think that would be great. It might be very interesting, actually, um, Ricardo's just suggested this idea of breaking down the different solution by categories. I wonder if it'd be possible to go back to the end users and say, here are, I don't know, 20 different tools, but broken down more into those, like what's PKI, what's certificates, what's application secrets, however we want to break it up. And so it's actually a really interesting um uh, we had quite a lot of discussion when forming this report about whether this truly was secrets management or whether this covered various categories and which ones. So I agree, actually, the, the range of products and projects listed here don't quite match just secrets management. Um, we're unlikely to revisit this exact topic again, because every quarter we pick a different topic, do something differently. but. I mean, Ricardo, if you want to shoot me an email afterwards, then maybe we can figure out something you could do. Cheryl, and I am I am Andres, one of the TLs for Six Security, happy to work with, with you and Ricardo as well. On sure. behalf of Six. Great. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Just um, I'll drop my email into the chat. And I think this has always been just a starting point. I mean, it's always opinionated, always biased. And the more we can use to expand on this and give experts like yourself the opportunity to respond to it and add more nuance, like I think the better for everybody. And it's point in time, right? Things are always gonna move on, but I do think this is very interesting. It's also very similar feedback to uh, to the previous technology readers, like on observability and databases. Everywhere we can benefit from from nuances and and the follow up reports and conversations, um, and to be more detailed. And and in, in categories, in categorizing the the items from the from the reader. Oh, Cornelius pointed out that. Key management is a separate category in the landscape compared to security and compliance. I seem to remember there's all sorts of areas of the landscape that are perhaps not quite, um, you know, it's those categories were drawn up some years ago. Maybe it's time to revisit those. There, is, there is security landscape work ongoing on trying to improve the, that 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 area as well. I'm not sure actually where where it's at exactly, but there's been some work on that. Mm. I think there was a definite unhappiness about how the thing was specified and what was in it. Yeah, for, for the security landscape, we're treating secrets and identities as distinct as separate solutions have made very different considerations for the problems they solve. In some cases, you you can use both in combination, and some other scenarios you may solely use one over the other. But yeah, they have very different properties, very different behaviors as, as systems. So, I have a little side project that I'm currently working on, a little side group which will provide feedback to things like CNCF landscape to improve it. I wasn't going to announce it for a couple of months because I'm still trying to get it together and get something useful out of it. Um, but feedback like this would be fantastic because then we can just go and change it and update it. So there is a mechanism. I'm trying to figure out exactly how this mechanism is going to work to improve the CNCF landscape and other assets owned by CNCF, other content assets. 
that's great news, Cheryl. Thank you. Do you know when the end user technology radars are done? I know that the members of the committee for each radar can suggest whatever solutions they feel are appropriate. Do they actually look at the landscape as well? They do. Right. So if we do have some lack of clarity in the landscape, that's going to be, you know, feeding into a vicious cycle there, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. I think this was, again, one of the ones where we looked at the landscape and I was like, eh, some of this makes sense, some of it, eh, not so much. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. That's great news that you're revisiting it. That's really good. Um, yeah, just a, just a teaser, right? The name of this group is called Carta, Cartographos. Cartographos, the Greek for <laughs> mapping technology, I think. It's like the idea is to like map out assets which will help people map out how to use cloud native technologies. That Just a teaser. Awesome. All right, any other questions from anyone about the technology radar? Or comments? One last comment. I think ultimately under the umbrella of everything security, we're, it, it's all predicated on this building blocks. So any way that we can energize the space for people, not just to reassemble existing components and expect different configurations, but actually introduce breakthrough technologies and breakthrough ideas. And perhaps this, this will precipitate of, well, if secret certificate manager here, maybe there's a world where there's just enough secrets and just enough identities so we can reduce blast radius of, of things. So I, I think we might be onto something of something innovative and breakthrough ideas. And like I see the mention of compliance. Well, better governance, better compliance is, is predicated on strong identities and very little secrets or only as many secrets as necessary. So I think a stride in, in that direction. So there's perhaps a framing that is all encompassing of different security dimensions and a broader narrative. Are you thinking of this reframing as part of what Cheryl's just starting to work on with the cartographos, or is that something that's happening in SIG security? I'm thinking in, in combination, it will be good to work with Cheryl. Sounds like she's also working in other areas around, well, how do people do modern uh, interpretations of, of landscapes? Like perhaps this is not a topographic map, but it's more a, a subway map of what station you get on and your destination dictates your journey. And uh, we, we can take, well, the, the report that's been done and the data from it and either perhaps change the language so it's not as disparaging of, of certain projects or like shed slide of why do, how would this projects come into the equation not being secret solution on their secrets management we can add a ton of color of like, how can you leverage both in combination? We can also do like the next set of things like, well, what's the intersection of the two and do a write up about it, about it. Uh, use the cloud native security landscape that's in the works for that purpose as well. And unlike Cheryl's redual of, of the landscape. So yeah, thinking, thinking a little bit uh, scatter minded and, and in every single direction, but starting to to hear the semblance of something that that we can perhaps form for more more thoughts around i would love to brainstorm with you on how to do those things together um definitely i'm open to new formats new ways that we can produce helpful content for people um yeah just to help guide them i think it's it's very hard for people who are not in this day-to-day -day looking at it to really understand the, the kind of reality. There's a lot of hype. There is a lot of hype, right? I love cloud native, but there's a lot of hype. So anything that can help people cut through that and figure out what is really truly coming down the pipeline would be great. 
hundred percent agree with that. And I think we have some very good articulations of like kind of 101, you know, how to adopt cloud native 101, but actually you don't have to go very far down the road before you realize, oh, there's a ton of security, observability, all kinds of other bits that maybe are a bit more confusing. Yeah. But I do, I, I remain, I think these technology radars are a fantastic initiative. I think we're learning a lot about what's actually being used and that's really useful. Yeah, thank you, Elena, for presenting the technology radar. Thank you, Cheryl and the team for working on it. It's, it's very useful information. I have one more agenda item. It's really like, these are the votes that are currently open. Please get in there. That is all. Yay. I see Liz nodding, so yay. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Yep, just trying Anyone to keep track of what's already voted for those, please go ahead. Yeah. If we, oh, if, does anybody have any questions about those topics that are holding them back from voting? All right, short and sweet, unless somebody has additional items they would like to bring up today. going. What would be the next technology radar, Cheryl? Oh, good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have put a, a link into this. So if you go cncf.io slash tech radar, um, this links to a GitHub issue where you can put in, you can make a suggestion for what a future radar should be, or you can plus like thumbs up things that you're interested in hearing about. And then it will be up to the next tech radar team to decide which one they find interesting and they think is is worth having a radar on. So you will find out just like I will in about two months. Question: How long does it take to go through each one of the tech radars? Um. About 10 weeks end to end. We pull together a team, they decide a topic, we survey the end user community, then the team decide on the, the final radar, and then we write it up and publish it. About 10 weeks. So you do about four a year? Yeah, we're doing quarterly. Yeah. So the next one's probably June, probably just after KubeCon. Are you seeing good take up from and I mean, it sounds like it in terms of the number of participants, but, you know, are you getting good participation, other end users kind of getting value out of taking part? People, people love it. So one of the things that is really interesting about the way this is set up is that if you're an end user, you can see exactly which company uses what technology and what they think about it. So you have a lot of private access to this data that externally you can only see the, the kind of aggregated version. So internally, people really, really have found a lot of value out of it. They go present it to their own teams when they're deciding on what technologies they should be using. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. People love it. Fantastic. Right, anyone with anything else they would like to bring up today, whether about Tech Radar or anything else? And if not, you will get 25 minutes back for your leisure. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank you so much, Liz. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Liz. Bye all. Thank all right, you. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye.